Hello everybody and welcome to The Lily Factor. Ding! Today I felt like just painting with acrylics, so I started out with a simple basic sketch portrait of a girl and I tried to make sure I didn't really go into too much detail to paint on top of it and at the time I didn't feel very guilty about painting on top of it with acrylics. I thought that was fine because I didn't really care for the sketch, but looking at it now knowing the outcome, I kind of wish I just left that sketch be. I left myself three colors to paint with. One was a gray color that you see I'm using for the skin tone, another was a beige color, and then a wine red color. I decided to use the beige color on the silver tone of the skin just to give it that more fleshed out look. And you see on the right that blob of color there was kind of the thumbnail, I guess is the way to put it, just to make sure I didn't just put on an awful color on the character, though you know, I realized pretty soon that that wine red there with that gray and beige is ick. <laughs> very, very yeah. <laughs> I also went on top of that red turtleneck with the beige color to give it a sort of lighting, and I also decided to use that lighter pink for the jacket, since a beige jacket with that just ugh would not look good. <laughs> also decided to use the same color for the hair and it just, it wasn't the right color scheme. I should not have picked those three colors together. I decided to just use the red by itself for the collar, but yeah, there, there's nothing really to say. It's not bad, but it's not great. In the process of the drawing, it was giving me some serious deja vu though because of my last acrylic painting I had done. Uh, ironically, also on my art channel I painted for you guys on that video. And yeah, the pink was just giving me some memories. So you can see those are the three paint colors there. Then I decided to go on top with just a brown color pencil. I actually thought it was black until I started shading in the eyes and I realized, oh, it's brown, which was fine. I guess gave it more of a flush look and I just kind of outlined it to give it a less painful look. But honestly, I was tempted to just go over it with the white paint after I started with this character, but I didn't because, you know, it's nice to see what to do and what not to do. I decided to sketch out this younger character. It was inspired by a movie I had watched that day and they had like these young girls in these adorable blue coats with these hats with red ribbon around them. It was just adorable. And then they had these yellow umbrellas and I just wanted to really not necessarily do fan art. I was just drawing from my memory of it, but just draw that design because it was so adorable. I just, I was in love with that design. So I had to do it. I sketched out this young girl in this coat. She really was probably just inspired by the main character, but I'm not trying to necessarily do fan art and kind of make it more of my own, but I think if I said it was the main character, people would believe that. If I said it wasn't, they'd also believe that. So it was kind of a nice mix. I started swatching kind of the paint colors I wanted to use for her color scheme, first with blues because of her blue coat and then yellows for, well, just because I love yellow. <laughs> I didn't really apply it to her outfit. Then red which I really didn't need to swatch the red. I knew it was already gonna work for that hat there. <laughs> but I thought it would be nice just to have those swatches there so I knew which blues to use. And it was actually kind of aesthetically nice, even though I don't swatch colors and it's not really something I really find enjoyable to do, but it was one of those one-time occasions where it actually did work for me. And then I'm adding some blue onto her coat and her dress. They're both the same shade of blue, so I kind of left some spacing between everything so that I could add some shading and lighting to make sure that you can differentiate the two and know that one is a coat and the other is the dress under the coat. Also added some light blues just to give it that kind of cute little stripe. I don't remember if the characters in the movie actually had those, but I, added it anyway because I like adding extra little details like that. Also got out a palette so I could mix the colors together unlike that awful 
pink painting at the bottom. <laughs> and then I was adding some harder blues just to shade everything out more. But doing that, I was then ready to start adding some darker blue onto the dress under the coat. It ended up making the dress look like a whole different color or really a different shade of blue than the coat, even though they really were both the same color. But it worked out because then it made it even easier to go, okay, she's wearing a coat and then she has a dress on underneath. It worked out. When I had started sketching out this character, I wanted to do her more than once in the sketchbook. So I wasn't really trying to make it perfect what I was doing with her because it was kind of the first start. But I ended up just leaving it at that because I liked it that much. I also started adding some lighting on top of the coat, some lighter blues, because I've just learned when it comes to painting, you have to start dark and then just kind of build up light. It's just easier that way and it takes way less paint. <laughs> I like to be kind of conservative with how much paint I use. I also then started mixing a yellow and a beige color to try and get that um, brownish tan color for the hat, which worked out great. I really think it matched the hat just the way I'm remembering it looked like. Next came the hair. I wanted this kind of orangish brown color and I had laid down that color and as soon as I did I was like, ugh, this is terrible. It's not right. And then as I finished filling it in, I was like, oh, this is actually perfect. I love this color. And then I, I was happy the rest of the drawing <laughs> because of that hair. I mean, not really just because of the hair, but it definitely helped. <laughs> then I added some light gray and then put some black on top for those adorable little shoes. I love those kind of shoes. I then decided to get rid of that little paint splotchy thumbnail. It was just kind of conquering that character. and. I didn't want that and I knew since I was recording it's not like I permanently lost that blob not that it's really that valuable <laughs> so I then put some white paint on top of it and tried to kind of paint her leg back in but that was kind of a nightmare if I'm gonna be honest because I kept having to add more coats on top but I could never really tell when they were fully dry or if they were still wet because it was just really hard in that particular circumstance. So every time I'd add stuff back on, because I'd think, oh, it's dry, it would remove all the parts that still needed to be covered with white or her skin tone, and it became kind of a pain. And then her skin tone too, the colors I used were very opaque, I guess is the word. And so, they couldn't really go on top of anything very well. I started with this one skin tone that I had in paint, but it just was really yellow. And I mean, normally when I use it, it doesn't seem that bad that way, but that time it was just not right. So I mixed it with a more orangish skin tone and that made it slightly better, but then I started using that beige color for kind of shading on her skin, and that really helped her skin just seem more realistic, less robotic, I guess is the word. Uh, it just didn't seem very living until I was able to kind of make that skin more natural. You can witness the, just how clear that skin tone was by that pink just still splotched on her right leg. I guess for us it's our left, but for her it's her right leg. And so I keep trying to go over it, but it really just was fighting me. <laughs> I also tried to kind of go about the nose. It was hard because the nose was kind of washing out, but you know, you can't really put too hard of a color on the face. Otherwise it looks like you accidentally put a paint splatter on there that you didn't mean to put. So I tried using some grays, beiges, and then I used like a mix between beige and red and that actually got me just where I wanted it to be. I went very daring because I was thinking maybe I should just use an outliner for the eyelashes, but I actually was gutsy enough to just take my paintbrush, grab the black color, and go over the eyelashes. And it didn't get ruined, which really surprised me. I guess I was being very careful. 
uh, not that I'm not usually careful, but gosh, painting eyelashes with your brush just like that is very, very, very scary. <laughs> very risky and very scary. I also used a gray to kind of come in and shade the neck area and other parts just to give it that nice shading that I really wanted because it just wasn't dark enough for everything quite yet. I still was having a fight with getting all the colors and everything there with even the coat, but then also with that little thumbnail I painted over. It was a battle, a very, very strong battle, but it worked out because every time I was getting upset, I just looked at the drawing and I'm like, oh, but it's turning out so great for an acrylic painting that really is just what I'd want it to be for any acrylic painting I did. I also kind of went over the hand with white paint because it just looked like this weird blob. But after going over it with white paint, it thinned out the hand and then it just made it look right. It looked hand-like because I had the hand right. I just added an extra finger that shouldn't have been sticking out <laughs> because it just looked like a blob. I also painted the eyes green. I wasn't sure what to do for the eyes, but I ended up going with green. And then I added some black back on top because it just looked like now she has this green blob on her face. <laughs> it needed some harder colors so it wasn't washed out. And then lastly, I had to add that yellow. So there it is. And oh my gosh, I was so happy with that, that yellow. Oh my gosh. It just went so perfect with the blue and the red, just how vivid it was. Also, I had written the names of the paint colors I used in the swatches, but I decided to go over it with the yellow paint just because I think it just looks better with only the swatches and not my own writing. Just, that was a, just a personal preference because it just looked kind of sloppy to me. Also, if you notice, I have this blue blob there. <laughs> that was me testing out. I was gonna add some dots, like light blue dots on her coat with a Q-tip, but I realized it, it would never really work. And B, it, it just, it, design-wise, it, yeah. It, it was just, I didn't need it, as it turned out. I also went over with some lighter colors and then darker colors for the bottom just to add some texture to that background. Then I added my name and boom, it was done. I have the ugly little character and then the character that went great and I'm so happy with the turnout. So thank you guys for watching. I hope this was kind of fun to watch because watching myself paint for me is really satisfying. But, um, I hope you were able to get something out of me just tampering around with those mysterious acrylic paints. So thank you guys for watching. Good luck in life and in art. Bye.